everyone. You're watching our special India's test down under. The big test series started early today in the morning and we'll get you all the analysis that you need to know from day one of the first test at Adelaide. I'm Shivani Gupta joining me on the show. Our resident cricket expert Nikhil Chopra joining me in the studio and also our consulting editor Borya Majumdar joins us from Kolkata. We're hoping to be joined by Saurav Ganguly, former India captain, very, very soon as well. But let's start uh, with getting you the highlights from day one. Australia are in a commanding position in the first test after day one. David Warner was Another quick off the blocks in the first session. David he put on a quick fire 50 run opening partnership with Chris Rogers. India stuck a couple of blows, removing Rogers and Shane Watson. Ishan Sharma accounted for Rogers, while Arun Varun Aaron got Watson's wicket. David Warner, what a start. Good start. Again, the drive, not much of movement. On short mid wicket. He got off the mark with that shot through the leg side for four. Oh, they've got him. But David Warner and Clark kept the good work going. Warner completed his 10th century in just 106 balls uh, and gave a tribute to his uh, departed teammate Phil Hughes as well as he celebrated being on 63 and then later his century on 106 balls. Michael Clark too got uh, to his half century and the Aussies then were dealt a major blow in the 44th over. Clark walked off the pitch after what looked like to be a spasm. Remember, he had uh, been uh, on the clock uh, uh, trying to be ready for the first test match uh, after being initially ruled out as well. The skipper was unbeaten on 60 but had to retire hurt. Warner though could not keep the momentum going, losing his wicket after scoring 145 runs. He became Karn Sharma's first wicket in Test cricket. First ball you face, thank you. Not in the match of practice. Oh, he's got batter ball on that occasion and uh, got Steve it. Smith and Mitchell Marsh then took on the reins, taking their team past the 300 oh, run shot. mark. Marsh and Smith put uh, up 87 runs for the fourth wicket when Varun Aaron struck again. He got uh, Marsh's wicket caught by Viraj Kohli for 41 runs. And then Mohamed Shami dismissed night watchman Nathan Loin for three runs. And in the last over the day, Shami also dismissed Brad Haddon. So a late surge really from India as far as action on day one is concerned. Uh, Nikhil, let's talk about the bowling first up. Uh, yes, they managed to, you know, peg back the Australians a little bit, got a, you know, uh, got a few wickets towards the end of the day as we usually see happening in test cricket when the new ball is taken overall though how impressed were you by the bowling on day one to be honest uh, not a, uh, a lot mm. and i say that because you know we conceded far too many runs you know mm. credit where it's due i think david warner played outstandingly well but i guess some of our quicker bowlers second spell even the third spell short wide giving too much width you know in test match cricket shivani if wickets are hard to come by even if the batting conditions are in favor of the batsman sometimes as a bowler and and a fielding captain side you got to tell your bowlers bowl to one particular line bowl to one particular field so that you know you don't concede too many runs as soon as you start conceding too many runs the test match is drifting apart if you control the run flow each time you uh, pick a wicket or two you're always looking to get back into the game so that's where i felt that maybe the indians made a little mistake we gave runs with great amount of ease to the australian batsmen no not taking any credit away from david warner hmm. he played an outstanding inning but i guess you know at least we could have controlled the run flow a little bit better hmm. Yes, if you look at uh, Varun Aaron's figures, uh, Borea especially, I mean, at one point, he ended day one at 17, uh, you know, with just under six runs and over. At one time, he was actually over six runs and over. So, plugging runs is going to be an issue because if you allow these Australian batsmen to settle in, with the pitch not really helping the bowlers that much, it's going to be really, really hard for India, isn't it? Yeah, they got to 15, seven overs. Yeah. They got to 25 and 2.3 overs. Now, that's where the momentum shifted at the very start. Australia sort of got the match by the scuff of the neck. I mean, that's always going to be the case because this is an inexperienced Indian bowling lineup. Varun Aron, you know, his tendency is to give, give runs in a, in a half. And David Warner would always do that. I mean, think of the innings in, in Perth in 2011-12 where he counter-attacked and absolutely smashed India all over the park. And yeah. the kind of form David Warner's in, and I keep saying it, he's the X factor in this Australian team as far as I'm concerned. He's, in, he's got 10 hundreds in 33 tests. So he obviously took it away from the Indian, Indian bowlers. 
But six wickets at the end of the day with Michael Clark retiring hurt. India can sense you've got a chance. Think back to 2003. Australia was 400 for five at the end of the day and Adelaide. India won that test match. You've got to believe you've got a chance. For me, one thing, Shivani, that outfield is electric. Compared to 2011-12, the ball wasn't even reaching to the boundary and that pitch was concrete hard. These are the two things which are profoundly different from that 2011-12 series. Let's talk about uh, Mohamed Shami as well. Uh, Bore, I want to come to you on this, uh, on the overall bowling performance. You mentioned about Varun Aaron having the tendency to leak runs. Uh, but a lot of eyes are also on Mohamed Shami because his recent test cricket performances haven't been anything to write home about. At least not, you know, something that give you, gives you a lot of confidence that, okay, he will be a wicket-taking option. Uh, before we talk about Ishan Sharma and Karan Sharma, a word about Mohamed Shami. And yes, he got two wickets towards the end of the day. But uh, overall, how satisfied were you with this performance? Uh, not for the bulk of the day because mm. if you're your premier bowler, I mean if you're starting the bowl, bowling with Varun Aaron, obviously you're the premier bowler because Aaron starting was he's fast but he's a rookie. So uh, Mohamed Shami is now you know about a year, two years old, one and a half years old in test match cricket last year November. So one year a little bit more. So you expect Mohamed Shami to mature perhaps a tad more. Yeah. I mean obviously he's putting in effort but you know trust me playing in Australia is also the whole occasion, the aura that the responsibility so it gets to you so while taking nothing away from Shami maybe he could have done a tad better but Ishan Sharma you mentioned the name in the first two spells at least I thought was top draw yeah I thought Ishan Sharma's first two spells were really really good in fact that brings me to the question Nikhil he wasn't given uh, you know the first ball Ishan Sharma yeah. uh, what do you make of that decision from uh, stand in captain Virat Kohli I guess uh, you know uh, his strength has always been to probably hit the deck hard yeah. and then get it to move off uh, the deck. You know, in terms of Shami, he can get that ball to swing in the air and also, you know, to some extent, Varun Aaron because he has a man who gets the ball to see, Nishan Sharma. So, you know, one change really didn't make, uh, make too much of a uh, difference as well. But I'm glad, I'm happy to sit here today and talk about uh, Shivani that Ishan Sharma is getting matured after the number of test matches he's played. Yeah. That he understands in test match cricket how to control the line length and bowl patiently, steadily, you know, in that corridor of uncertainty. You know, you sometimes play that patient game, keep troubling the batsman, don't give away too many runs because the pace of the game has also changed. You start bowling four, five, six overs, not giving too many away. Batsmen themselves try and do manufacture shots and that's where you sometimes get wickets. So I'm, I'm glad that Ishan Sharma is playing the lead role in that. He's not looking to leak runs or he's not you know, getting clipped off the pads against the right-hander with great amount of ease. That, was, that is what he was guilty of earlier. Mm. But I'm glad that he's been able to sort that out. Yeah, Ishan Sharma brought India the first uh, breakthrough of the day in Chris Rogers. Uh, uh, it's almost like a second coming, isn't it, for Ishan Sharma, Borya? Uh, you know, he performed and uh, impressed everyone with his effort in England as well. Uh, uh, you know, do you think he's, uh, as Nikhil is saying, he's maturing uh, and actually becoming the spearhead of the team, unle uh, you know, unlike what we saw him not being given uh, the first ball? You know, I think he's a bit of a Peter, Peter Siddle kind of bowler now for India. I mean, Peter Siddle did not bowl, for, you know, new ball up for Australia in 2011, 2012, for example. It was James Pattinson and, and Ben Hilfenhaus. Peter Siddle came in first change, but he was the go-to bowler. And Ishan Sharma is becoming that kind of a bowler for India. In England, you and I were both there. His Lord's performance was outstanding. The fact that he did not play in Southampton was a big blow and perhaps that shifted momentum. So Ishan Sharma, definitely a key cog in the Indian wheel at this point in time because of his experience, because of the fact that he's maturing and, and, and now he knows he knows what his job is and he can play the, the, the contending role as well so definitely that's a big plus for India but more importantly I think he now takes to needs to take up Zahir Khan's role mm. and mentor the younger bowlers because Ishant has been around for about six seven years it's time he takes up that role as well that's right and uh, Karan Sharma was also amongst wickets picking up his first wicket in test cricket uh, Nikhil I obviously have to come to you with this Karan Sharma widely regarded uh, as perhaps the spin-off of the future for India, you know, somebody who can perform in all kinds of conditions. Uh, Saurav Ganguly rates him very high after his IPL performances. Uh, and he was to be perhaps the X factor in the bowling department for India, relatively unknown. And, you know, somebody who has the knack of picking up wickets. Your impression of uh, Karan Sharma after his uh, first in test cricket? Well, you know, uh, Shivani, uh, butterflies in his stomach. It's mm. a big occasion. You're playing in Australia, you know. 
the entire world has got their eyes set upon you. I'm sure this kid has got a lot of talent. He will come good. You know, I guess it's a little uh, unfair to judge him that quickly mm. because he got stuck against the left-hander as well and David Warner with the kind of form that yeah. he's in. You know, sometimes as a batsman, when you're getting runs with great amount of ease and there's one particular bowler who's looking to trouble you, very early on in, in, in his innings, you know, as a, a strategic point, you go after that bowler. So maybe Karan Sharma was troubling him and then David Warner started playing the reverse sweeps and, you know, started going over the top. So just to unsettle Karan Sharma a bit, mm. but at least, you know, he wasn't one, guy, uh, one man who was getting hit on short pitch deliveries. That made a big difference. Anything that he was giving away runs, was you know he was allowing the uh, ball to hang in the air and off the front foot. So I personally feel he's been preferred over uh, R. Ashwin, you know, who's been such a regular in the team and you know has been given a lot of confidence. Which is by not the a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, which is not a bad thing, and I say that because first year the Test match in Australian conditions, what a wrist spinner can do sometimes when he's ha having a good day, maybe the finger spinner cannot do. So that's not a bad option hmm. that you play Karan Sharma, and I hope this kid does well because he's grow going to grow in confidence with the number of overs he bowls in test match cricket. Mm. It's never easy to make your debut and come and you know try and pick up a five-wicket hole. Right, it, since I mentioned about Karan Sharma getting into the team, the playing 11, you know, uh, ahead of uh, our Ashwin Borea, your comments on this as well, on the 11 that India chose, uh, as a little surprised maybe not to see Umesh Yadav in it, but your take on the 11. You know, you expect Umesh Yadav again, out and out fast uh, mm. uh, bowler, but who do you replace? Perhaps Mohammad Shami. Mm. But if Umesh Yadav and Varun are on, one of the two break down, then what happens? You know, both are injury prone. One of the faster bowlers break down, then automatically, you know, the bowling goes completely haywire. I think Karan Sharma is a good pick. Don't forget, there was one Shane Warne in 1992, 150 runs in that first day, 708 wickets to finish off. So, I mean, no one's saying Karan Sharma will do that. If he even does half of that, it'll be terrific for India, isn't it? I don't think this is a bad bowling unit. I would have loved to see Bhuvnesh Kumar, not possible for two test matches, but I don't think it's a bad bowling unit. With Umesh Yadav and Varun Aron, perhaps you have the option, I mean, the possibility of leaking runs at both ends, mm. but Mohammad Shami, you expect no. control, so that may have prompted this decision as well. Maybe Umesh over Varun Aron, Borya? If you only want one of these two in the That's playing a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. But Varun Aron in his last test match in England, Shivani was very impressive. Mm. So, you know, he, he, she hit it very, very well in that last test match in England where he rattled people with 150 kilometer pace. And Umesh has not played test, test mm. match cricket in recent times, more one day cricket. So perhaps Varun Aron was preferred for that reason. But I'm sure Umesh Adav has a fantastic career ahead of him. Can you play the two of them together? I don't know. Mm. Because if one of them break down with three faster bowlers and you don't have an all rounder in that team, then the Bowling becomes really, really weak. All right, let's talk about Virat Kohli then. Uh, I'll come uh, to Nikhil first. Uh, Virat Kohli captaining India in Australia in the first test match. I mean, huge occasion for him as well. He sounded extremely confident, you know, before leaving for the tour and ever since he's landed in Australia as well. Uh, uh, but it's a difficult time for anybody, especially, you know, given how the Australians were allowed to settle in and then, you know, uh, rattled up huge scores. Uh, uh, what did you make of his captaincy on day one? Never very easy. You mm. know, when you're down under, you're the captain on the side, you're as good as your side. You know, mm. early days for Virat Kohli, but at least, you know, he's been able to uh, control the side. He looks uh, pretty excited. You know, he's jing on the bowler saying, come on. But maybe, you know, when things were slipping away, a couple of things that I probably felt, you know, when Karan Sharma was bowling, you could have probably said, that I'm going to try and give you an open field, try and contain runs. Because uh, as soon as the ball's getting slightly older, try and prepare the ball like for reverse swing, so that I, once you get off, I get in my second uh, spell, third spell from the medium pacers, there's something in it. But the important thing is in that spell of Karan Sharma as a spinner, you need to control runs. You know, in the outside game plan, uh, Shivani, you've got to decide who your match winner bowlers are. Mm. It's important to get them in at the right time and also who's I'm going sure to be playing kick. second fill in a strategic point of view. If Karan Sharma's job is to obviously try and contain runs then give him that sort of field as well. That is important because for a youngster looking to play in Australia, it's a big occasion, you know. Mm. He gives away a couple of boundaries. Obviously, the butterflies are not going to settle down so quickly. Right. All right. In the context, very quickly, before I take a break, Bora, your comments on Virat Kohli as the captain. The context, especially, where Mahindra Singh Dhoni has a poor record abroad. Mahindra Singh Dhoni has been criticised for just letting thring, uh, things drift away in Test cricket. And that is, you know, a consensus all across the board for Mahindra Singh Dhoni, that he's passive, he doesn't, you know, make things happen. Uh, in that backdrop, 
your comments on Virat Kohli? You know, I thought it was good to see Virat get it back. I mean, six wickets, 354, Michael Clark unfit. Can you finish them off for 400? If you mm. can, good. But I thought one thing, I mean, without being critical, first day in Australia, always difficult. When Michael Clark walked out, 200 for two, and, and, you know, Stephen Smith was the only batsman in form. After that, it's Mitchell Marsh, not much cricket. Brad Haddon, completely not much cricket after injury. That's where Virat may have capitalized a bit more, picked up a couple of wickets and put pressure. That was the only thing I thought that, you know, you could have done different. But other than that, I've got no problems with the way Virat captain today. The, test the, test, uh, the first test match. Uh, uh, but first, I want to talk about, you know, just the chat that you uh, preluded this test match about Australia being ready, whether the players are going to actually turn up for the test, first test match. How are they going to be able to deal with uh, his death and actually play cricket and, you know, shift gears to play cricket. Uh, Michael Clark perhaps rushed a little bit to be ready. We'll get to him in just a bit. But your comments on Australia coming back from the tragic incident regarding Phil Hughes. They've done very well, Shivan, isn't it? I mean, they've done very, very well. A uh, couple of days back, in fact, day before yesterday, I was having a chat with Michael, and, 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 and it, was, it was tough. I mean, even then, they were full of emotion, but they've done well. I mean, at the end of the day, they would take it. And, and it was great to see. The, it was great to see the, the tribute being given. It was great to see fellow cricketers doing what they are to our game, the game that we love. This is why we call it the gentleman's game. The way the Indians reacted to it, the way the crowd reacted to it, everybody standing up. 63, David Warner, who's a very dear friend of Phil Hughes, as all of us know, looking up at the heavens. I think these gestures make a huge difference to adding to the stature of our sport. Overall, these are gestures that will linger in our memories for a very long, long time. And Phil Hughes is turning immortal by the minute, by the day. Overall, the Australians could not have done better. And Nikhil? Well, absolutely. You know, touching uh, moment that Phil Hughes, 13th uh, man, Put on the list, mm. you know, that number even 63, I guess for a cricketer, for a batsman, it's going to be remembered for a long, long period of time. It is so very unfortunate the way Phil Hughes uh, passed away, but, uh, you know, you talk about the Australian team being ready. It was a hard time for them to overcome that, but I guess once uh, the test match starts, once you enter that field of play, you know, giving all your respect, and I'm sure the entire Australian team would be saying this one's for Phil uh, Hughes. They'd want to go out there and put their best foot forward. The subconscious mind takes over. You want to go out there and put your best foot forward as well. So I personally feel as soon as the test match started, I guess the Australian team would have been ready. Right, uh, Michael Clark, of course, as I mentioned, uh, was in a race against time to be fit for the first test. He eventually played but retired hurt with what we uh, figure are back spasms for him. Uh, Saurav Gangli now uh, live with us uh, from Mumbai. Saurav, uh, we were talking about the tribute to Phil Hughes. Before I come to you for your analysis on the test match itself, uh, your comments about the tribute before the test match uh, to Phil Hughes, the 63 seconds applause, David Warner paying tribute to him on 63 not out and so on. Absolutely, I think uh, we expected this to happen. Uh, it's been a great gesture uh, by the uh, Australian team. We've seen that happening over the last 10 days. So I, so, uh, I wasn't surprised with that. Uh, terrific to see the way Warner went about his job. Not only did he bat well, mm. but uh, his celebrations were, were, were a little different from the normal Warner we know. And as I said before, you know, in terms of the world, the cricketing world, the players have really gone up and, and ahead in the eyes of the people. So it's, it's a great advertisement of the game which has happened in the last 10 months, yes, for the wrong reasons, uh, for, the, with, for the loss of life of, of a very young man who had his entire life in front of him. Uh, but I think players have really stood up well and, and Australia played brilliantly on day one of this test match. Yeah, let's talk about the performance. Uh, you know, if you can talk about, of course, David Warner giving them the start, uh, which was absolutely brazing and blitzkrieg start for them. And that kind of set the tone, isn't it? Uh, did the Indian bowlers sort of perform well enough for you? Did the pitch have enough uh, for them to actually uh, make that much of a difference as well? What did you make of the Indian performance on day one? I thought, the Indi I thought the Indians came back very well with the new ball to get three wickets in the new ball with the new ball uh, really made them finish the day well but I, I don't think they, they bowled very well in the first two sessions. Uh, Varun Arun picked a couple of wickets, Mohammad Shami picked a couple of wickets with the second new ball but they gave too many runs away. Yeah. You know, if, you, if, you're if you're letting the batting team score more than six runs and over or more than five runs and over when you're bowling. Uh, you've not done. You've not done a good job, and I was surprised not to see Umesh Yadav play this test exactly. match uh, ahead of the rest because I thought he was in superb form in, in the in the in the one-day matches against Sri Lanka, and he was India's highest wicket taker. So I was surprised 
not to see him play the test match. But the good thing for India is that they have come back well. Uh, they still have to take four wickets. Uh, hopefully, we'll see Michael Clark uh, come out and bat for Australia tomorrow. So Australia still have Clark and and uh, Steve Smith who are set. And if Australia get past 425, 430, India will really, really have to bat well to save the Test match because you can see that if the ball is put in the right areas with the India, which the Indians did with the second new ball. Uh, you can pick wickets. It's not as flat as it looks. It's just that we haven't bowled well in the first two sessions. Also, as the test match progresses, this pitch is going to spin. So, India will have to bat really, really well to get themselves into a good position in this test match. Right. Uh, so, 420 around what India should aim for. Uh, a word about Ishan Sharma. You mentioned how Dada India did much, much better with the second new ball, and Ishan had a lot to do with that. Uh, uh, you know, we were talking about how there wasn't any Umesh Yadav in the side and that was surprising and you uh, you mentioned that as well. Uh, uh, on day two, what do you, would you like to see the bowlers do better, especially the likes of Varun Aaron and Mohamed Shami who have given a lot of runs away on day one? Yeah, they'll have to, uh, they will have to, uh, uh, they'll have to really come back and, and do well tomorrow. I thought Ishan Sharma was probably the best of the Indian bowlers. He bowled a good line, good length. He did not get support from the other end. You know, bowling in test cricket is about bowling in pairs. If you keep leaking runs from one end, it will be hard for anyone to stop runs and the, uh, put the pressure on the other end. And that's, and that's, that's the problem Ishan Sharma faced. But I thought he was India's, uh, he was India's best bowler and, uh, and, 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 and did reasonably well. Uh, and uh, as I said, the last half an hour has pulled India back into this test match. But as I said, they'll have to really, really bat well to keep themselves going for the next five days because this test match will go on for the next five days. Yeah. All right, and we'll keep coming back to Saurav, Borea and Nikhil for the analysis for uh, the entire series as well. Of course, as the test goes uh, along, we'll talk more about Virat Kohli as a captain as well. For the meantime, uh, that's all we have on India's Test Down Under special. Uh, keep watching headlines today. We'll keep